Hey everybody, I'm Scott Allen Miller and we're going to do a little bit of an extra video today because someone commented on the videos, they're very upset and it was all false advertising that I did a video about how to work in Nicaragua and talked about needing to do remote work but didn't list all of the places where you could work remotely. And I want to talk about this because um, clearly something's being missed. So I'm a little bit confused by this because basically uh, if we were to say the opposite, oh, you can't work remotely, you need to work in person. And someone said, well, this is false information. Uh, you didn't tell me where to work. Are you really asking me to list all jobs? Um, I understand that there's a need for some guidance potentially, but remote work represents an enormous pool of every job that does not require your physical presence which is certainly more jobs than probably any given human could list in a lifetime. Um, but let's talk a little bit about this because essentially most jobs can be done remotely or at least some aspect of most jobs. So when we say terms like office jobs, any job that we refer to as an office job can be done remotely. Any job that was able to be done during COVID where you didn't go into an office could be done remotely. Jobs that are often associated with being in person may not require you to actually be there. Teaching, for example, is often seen as something that requires physical presence, but isn't. Lots of teachers work remotely. Some do not, and some jobs require some number of people, teachers, for example, to be on premises and others not to be or can allow some not to be. Um, the entire IT field, the entire programming field, the entire concept of project management or middle management, um, CEOs, CIOs, CFOs, accounting, finance, legal, uh, HR, those entire departments don't need to be on site. Some companies are going to require that. Some companies may benefit from it. There may or may not be overlap between those two things. I don't really want to talk about whether it makes sense for people to work from an office, only whether or not you can. Even veterinarians and doctors will often work remotely. Receptionists, secretaries, translators, video editors, graphic artists, movie editors, you name it. If you work at a computer, chances are you can be remote. If you work at a phone, chances are you can be remote. If you're creative, there's a good chance you can be remote. Most engineers and architects could be remote. Think about all of the jobs that people do. Very few of them actually require your physical presence. Some, maybe many, will benefit from it, but may not require it. Some, many, benefit from you not being physically present, whether it's by lowering cost or making you more efficient. And if you're really interested in this topic, this is kind of apropos because just a few days ago, uh, I did a study on uh, companies requiring people to return to work because they weren't measuring their jobs and that's on my SAM IT channel. So if you're on my main channel, just go to the main page, look down, SAM IT is linked there and it's very recent. They're talking about work from home and returning to the office. Um, but the thing that's most important here, when talking about remote jobs, I can't really provide anything beyond just basic common sense as to can a job be remote. Often people do come to me and say, well, that job can't be remote, and I explain to them why it can be. I do this for all kinds of businesses all the time because people like to have a knee-jerk reaction and simply claim that jobs can't be remote because they don't want to think about it or they don't want that to be the answer. In many cases, I already know people who do that job remotely. Doctors and veterinarians are great examples of jobs I work with every day, and they are remote, and they are totally able to work that way. Again, not every doctor. It's very hard to do a remote surgery. Even that is starting to become a thing, however. But what really is needed, if you want to ask the question, what jobs can I do? What matters is not the jobs. What matters is the I. That's what's important in that particular question. What jobs can I do remotely? Since I can't answer what jobs you can do locally, how could I possibly answer which ones you do remotely? You could be a translator, but I don't know if you speak another language. You could be a programmer, but I don't know if you can program. You could be a web designer. In fact, many of these fields are completely remote anyway. Some are even remote like IT, 
even when they're on site. They may make IT come to the office, but traditionally IT who's in the office works remotely from inside the office. That may sound counterintuitive, but they basically just operate the same as if they're at home and often can move home and people don't notice. So there's lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of jobs and no one knows them all. But what's important is knowing your skill set. And people do ask me this quite often, right? What can I do to work remotely? And it surprises me how much I have to sit down and brainstorm and say, okay, what do you know how to do? What do you like to do? What have you done before? Do you think you could do something else in the future? Job or jobs are is a big thing, right? It, it's hard to really grasp why someone would think I was going to list how to get jobs remotely. If I did list jobs, if I found some magic that doesn't exist, first of all, list of companies in, let's say, the U.S. or Canada, but even that I'm guessing what country you would have to work remotely to, because I don't know what country you're coming from, um, even if there was a list of employers who allowed you to work remotely, there's some flaws with that. One is that many employers think they don't allow people to work remotely, but do when they hire the right person and they demand to work remotely. Another is that I could list thousands of companies and jobs and you would say, wow, thanks. Now I just have to go get these. I can just go sign up for one of these. Say, wait a minute. It's not how jobs work. You have to go interview and get that job. And so that's why no one asks, can you give me a list of all jobs, right? Asking for a list of all remote jobs is slightly less intimidating than asking for a list of all on-premises jobs. Then you might as well just be asking for a list of all jobs. What good does a list of all jobs do anybody? If I did have a list of every company, every job that could be done remotely, how would you use that list? You would not be able to pick it up for the amount of paper it's written on. It would take you a lifetime to read through it. And by the time you found something that was really interesting for you, you would apply and then find out that they had job requirements that you didn't have, or even if you had them, you may have failed the interview. So it's a weird thing that people are, are asking. And I realized it was one person who asked this question, but I wanted to give a response because they were kind of heated in how they responded. And honestly, the expectation was pretty crazy in my mind. There's, and, and this is really important because the conversation was about how to work from Nicaragua. And in that case, being in Nicaragua has a few important factors that I think we covered in the video. Factors like your power does fluctuate, but there's ways to mitigate that so that it's not a problem. Your internet is fast and stable. It's important for someone deciding the jobs that they need to do. Do they require a lot of bandwidth? Do they require low latency? Those are questions that we answered so that you could decide about the jobs you must know about, because only you can know about your jobs. Only you can prevent forest fires. And, and third is the latency. Right, the US and Canada are so close to Nicaragua by the fiber stretch that phone calls from Nicaragua appear from a time perspective to come from inside the United States, allowing you to make calls here as if you were local inside the United States. That's something that's important if you're thinking about working remotely in many cases. Not all jobs use phones, but those that do are able to sound that way. And of course, Nicaragua is not like Qatar and you are able to use phones here. Some countries disallow the use of normal phones certainly not Nicaragua. So there were things that we touched on, but it seems at least I believe it is being implied that somehow that the fact that it was a conversation about Nicaragua would somehow dictate what jobs they would go get remotely. But that has nothing to do with the situation. When you're looking for remote jobs, it is the country you've come from that dictates what jobs you can do remotely because you normally either have to work in the country that you are from or you need the right to work in the country that you're from, or you need that country to allow you to work remotely. One of those things. So if you're looking for what jobs you can do, that is a question that only someone who knows what country you are from could answer. What country you were working in is all but irrelevant, except for the factors that I mentioned, things like the infrastructure, power, and internet, and how they may affect you 
or potentially if there were local laws that allowed you or didn't allow you to do certain types of work, or if you were not allowed to be a digital nomad, of course, those things would affect you. That's what you need to know about Nicaragua. It has great infrastructure. It has such a 55 millimeter latency to much of the US, and you're allowed to work as a digital nomad. Those are the relevant pieces on that side. What jobs you can do are dictated completely by the country you are from and what jobs they offer and by what jobs you are skilled and able to find someone willing to let you do. So expecting me or anyone in a YouTube video to answer things that are based solely on information we don't have, it's a weird expectation and doesn't bode well for your being able to find a job in the future, person who asked this, because if that's how you approach jobs, that you expect them to just give them to you by the nature of the country you're traveling in, and that you don't expect to have to have any skills or knowledge or interview for them, and you don't need to have use any common sense in figuring out what you would do, that's probably going to make interviewing for those jobs, or any job, really challenging. So I don't know exactly what people are looking for, but I did want to respond to this really insane comment on the vlog because well, it makes for good video fodder. And those who want to watch this and see me rant about silly questions, because honestly, I don't get very many completely ridiculous questions. And those that I do get are that are really ridiculous normally uh, are, are aimed at uh, third parties and not at me. Um, and so they're often something I can't engage over. But this was an opportunity to talk about the fact that I did actually think these things through. And I'm not a crazy person who wanted to give insane answers that couldn't exist. So complaining that it's fake that I did the only reasonable thing and not giving you fake information seems like a weird thing to complain about. So apply some common sense and think about it that way. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. I will see all of you tomorrow.